In today's throne speech, the government boasted of the following, a £2.7 billion for the vaccine deployment programme, £2.3 billion for the vaccine task force, but not a penny, apparently, for the thousands of people injured or killed by the vaccine, no matter what the coroner's certificate says. It all sounds so easy on the government website. Have you noticed your health declining since receiving the COVID-19 injection. If you weren't made fully aware of the health risks from the COVID-19 vaccines, you are entitled to compensation of £120,000. Well, that sounds pretty straightforward. It's only when you prowl through the small print that you find out, quote, it can take at least six months to process a vaccine damage payment claim. If you're making a claim about a COVID-19 vaccination, it will take longer. Well, it's government... So it can take a lot longer. Charlotte Wright, who was on this show last week, Charlotte's husband died from the vaccine last January, 32 years old. That's almost a year and a half ago now, and she hasn't received tuppence three farthing from this program. They spent the marketing budget on a snazzy poster. And since then, as far as I can tell, they haven't paid out nothing. As I said yesterday, more than one thing can be true. On the one hand, Chairman Xi's Wu flu can kill people. And on the other hand, the vaccine can kill people. You can believe both things to be true. It's not either or. According to the yellow cards, over 2,000 people are dead. According to the government's website, quote, it is estimated that only 10% of serious reactions and between 2 and 4% of non-serious reactions are reported. So that would make over 20,000 deaths from the vaccine. Why aren't we talking about this? Over at... um, What's it called? Talk radio? Talk radio? Mike Graham is fighting vainly the old ennui. Quote, pretty sad to see a project that had so much promise, that's GB News apparently, plumbing the depths of gaslighting the British people, all the way from hashtag Canada. Actually, is hashtag Canada a thing? I would be, I would be very surprised. I can't see that going viral. Uh, uh, if I remember, the Canadian gaslighter is a minor superhero. Is he's, he's Wolverine's best friend in X Men 27? But you know, Mike Graham has a kind of point. It is faintly embarrassing that upstart colonials, Canucks like yours truly, or Kiwis like Dan Wooten, who will also be talking about this topic in the next hour, have to interview all these English, Scottish, Irish, Welsh widows and children. So why don't you guys on the home team give it a go, Mike? A Canadian gaslighter, gaslight me one more time. Why don't you play that record on your show? Number 28 in 1973. And... By the way, is it really gaslighting? Are you saying these wives aren't really widowed? These children aren't really the, these children aren't really orphaned? I've just just as I went on air, I saw this from the Manchester Evening News: tragedy as girl girl eighteen dies of blood clot two weeks after COVID vaccine. This is Casey Turner here, eighteen-year-old Casey Turner. Uh, She had the vaccine uh, because she was part of a uh, Yorkshire health service team. So she wanted to have it so she didn't uh, infect uh, uh, other people or cause any trouble to other people. She had no reason to have that vaccine. 18 years old. Casey Turner. Poor girl's dead now. Manchester Evening News. Just before I came on air. I repeat what I said yesterday. We have asked AstraZeneca for a response. Every time we get one of these coroner's certificates from one of our guests, we forward it to AstraZeneca and ask them to comment. on. We have not heard back from them now, not for any of these people. Um, As we heard yesterday from Kelly Hatfield talking about her poor father, AstraZeneca sent legal teams to sit in on coroner's inquests up and down the land. So they're not short of manpower. Uh, We would be happy to have a spokesman for AstraZeneca tonight, tomorrow, any day of the week, but we haven't heard a peep from them.